Yes, hello. Hi Ashutosh, nice to meet you. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. Like why is it happening? What my background? Is it fine? Uh you are you seem to be at a beautiful beach, but I know it's a virtual <laughs> background. <laughs> yeah, but I have to change it. Like I don't know why it happens. Uh, do you do you know the steps to change it? Do you want me to guide you? Yeah, I think now it's fine, right? Your video got turned off actually right now. Turn it on. What about now? Uh, no. Oh yes, yes. Now it's fine. It's totally fine. Yes, you're back. Yes, thank you. Okay, so how have you been? Yeah, I have been very well. Thanks for asking. And how about you? How's Same everything here. with you? And how are the things with you? I think I would have to copy your answer and say that everything is going pretty well. Uh, so far, so good. No complaints. Okay, that's great. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, so what was the best? What's the best thing that's happened to you today? <laughs> today, Anything like uh, what is special? Own. I went out. I just mm -hmm. came a few minutes ago, almost and like you know, 15 or 20 minutes ago. I was not sure that I'll be able to attend this session or not mm -hmm. because I went out to the market and mm -hmm. uh, there was a problem in my friend's phone. So that's why mm -hmm. we, are, we were in the market to fix, like you know, for fixing that problem. Okay. But yeah, fortunately, I came back. So that's why I'm here to attend this session. So, what best happened? Of course, I bought some smartphone holders for me because I run a YouTube channel. Yeah. So I like those things like some small tripods or a smartphone holder. So I bought two for myself. Mm -hmm. So you're always into new technology, something to make the quality of your videos better. Yes, you can say somewhat. Yeah, <laughs> not that much. Nowadays, I'm not able to buy a camera for myself or things like that. But at mm -hmm. least whatever it is, I do everything from my phone. That's good enough. You're like this one man army taking care of your whole YouTube channel. Yes. Do you enjoy working alone or in the future, would you like to work with a team of people? Yes, if I, I like working with myself, that mm -hmm. is one of the most important things. I want to mm -hmm. sit here and I want to work whatever I want to do. But going to office, working with a lot of people is going to be very difficult for me, what I feel. But if my YouTube channel grows and it will be difficult for me to handle, then I can just uh, have some people who can help me as a team. That would be good. But working in the office as an employee is very difficult for me, what I feel. Mm. So the regular uh, office desk job is not for you then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I feel like. But what God has the plan for me, I don't know that. Yeah, I think let's see what destiny has in store for you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, mm. okay then. Uh, so uh, in today's session, I want to talk to you about some really serious, but uh, meaningful concepts, meaningful topic. And the most mm -hmm. prominent among them being uh, in South Asian countries, right? Like us, uh, a girl child is considered to be a burden, even in this century, even in the 21st century, a girl child is considered to be a burden. Uh, so why do you think uh, people have this thought process? Yes, when it comes to the girls nowadays, yes, in some cases, I'm able to see they are getting the like importance, even though if they are girl and boy, it doesn't matter. But mm -hmm. whatever you said, you are talking about, they understand girl as a burden. Why is that mm -hmm. so? Because there are some bad rituals like if i talk about dowry why yeah. the father is always concerned that if they have a daughter from the first day they will start saving money from for their mm -hmm. like you know marriage so that is the thing in our society even though i'm able to feel that i have two elder sisters so mm -hmm. i'm looking for the grooms and when i go there they ask they have the ranges of money like five lakhs ten lakhs fifteen lakhs like it depends it depends on you that how much you can afford for that if you want a boy with a government job, you have to pay 15 lakhs or 20 lakhs rupees cash. So, and that that's very expensive. So that's why they people consider as a burden. Even though what I know, if your daughter is doing job also, then also you have to pay in most of the cases. Mm -hmm. Then they ask for more money. So because it happens like if you are doing job. 
ask for money even if she's working and bringing in the income even then yeah of course then also it's very common if if like you are working okay and if you'll have to marry a guy who is in the a good job maybe if he is a civil servant you have to pay a lot of money for that oh my god so, that's so one yeah that's what the thing is yeah that's why this is a thing they consider as a burden but it's not that's why they are always concerned from the first day the daughter is born that they'll have to save money for for their like a marriage that yes. is the thing yes so um it's because of these man made customs only um women are being discriminated against so i agree with you and it's a really sad reality you know um even yeah uh, in educated families because you mentioned if the boy is a civil servant i mean he is a civil servant he is very educated he works for the government he is supposed to bring a change in the society and here he is asking for dowry so that's that's really sad and what happens in some cases they just you know they to they will tell you all the amount hmm. which they have invested on their boy that this hmm. much for their studies this much for their preparation this much for this that's how the like amount is and you'll have to pay <laughs> oh god that's really i mean i feel very bad uh, for the parents uh, 15 yeah. lakh rupees it could be the life savings of a normal middle class family right 15 lakhs 20 lakhs it's it's a huge amount it's a huge deal for middle class family but but yeah exactly it goes same with everybody like if if anybody has a daughter and son so when they will have to pay they are very tense and frustrated okay yeah. but when their son is going to get married they will do the same okay they they are not going to leave that i will uh, just you know do marriage of my son without taking money without taking dowry not at all they will also ask for a lot of money so that's why this culture is just going further otherwise if the people are educated and if they are paying for the daughters but if they like and they will think and they will not take money so mm -hmm. so this will end somewhat like but it's not ending because when they are paying they are stretched prestigious and talking about this kind of things but when their son is going to get married they will ask for like money for sure okay so in your family uh, would you be willing to break this cycle when it's time for Difficult. you to it depends on my parents uh, what mm -hmm. i know uh, what happens because i have two elder sisters and what is their statement if they are paying for two sisters why they will not get from a single son so i'm the only single son so they want i don't know but i don't have any idea to take a lot of money i want a good person for my life so it can be peaceful it's it's not a, like you know good to have a like you know a lot of money what i will do of money if i will get someone like who is not going to be ready with living with me or somewhat so that is a big problem i don't have any kind of thought till now but this is the responsibility of the parents and they handle those cases boy like you know that groom is not going to ask money their parents will intervene okay don't you think that uh, the men can take a stand and try to explain to their parents that this is not right because they are adults they are not kids right they are well in their 30s or late 20s so don't you think that if the boys start taking a stand and try to explain to their family that please don't take dowry um and maybe pressurize their parents not to do these things don't you think that the cycle then then they will say like uh, just whatever the money i have invested on you try to give me back yeah then return it back to your parents why to take it from mm -hmm. another girl's father mm -hmm. right so Even yeah but of course it's work. difficult for uh, if if a person is uh, earning a lot he can do it otherwise uh, i don't really think so anybody says like that they can take a stand if you are saying as an example or choice they can do it but it's not happening that's what i'm telling yes yes i believe it should because if your mm -hmm. parents have invested the money in you so as an adult it's your responsibility to pay them back you can't pressurize the parents of another girl to pay your parents for the money yeah even though they don't understand even the girls parents they are investing a lot of money uh, just mm -hmm. you know in, uh, like mm -hmm. on their daughters nowadays they are mm -hmm. providing them good education yes. they are just investing money for their preparation some girls are doing job as well right so right. like and it doesn't make any sense the girls mm -hmm. daughter uh, girls like you know daughters parents also they are investing a lot of money on them right correct correct so true it's a very funny society that we live in <laughs> so very tricky yeah. 
anyways moving on moving on uh, so um in whenever i watch news i uh, see incidents of indians being discriminated against when they move to the west like racism right i see stories of racism mm-hmm. but if you carefully observe even in our country people discriminate against each other especially on the basis of their mm-hmm. skin color if you are of a certain skin yes. color then um, you are somehow better otherwise people make fun of you um have you observed these kind of unfortunate yeah you are absolutely right we are only pointing a finger towards the white people that they do racism but that's not right of mm-hmm. course even the people in our country who have a little fair skin they will point out to the people who have the dark dark skin and mm-hmm. they gave uh, multiple funny nicknames to them maybe you can mm-hmm. see in your society so multiple funny names to the people like if they have the black dark like you know skin so racism is there in our country as well we are able to see this uh, this kind of news uh, from the usa from the uk this kind of countries when the people they go out then they experience those things but right now when they are living in our country they don't feel they are doing racism even though they do the same things with others right but they are not understanding when they go out then they feel like it's really bad yeah mm-hmm. whatever you said even though it happens in our family also if there are three siblings two are mm-hmm. fair, two have fair skins and mm-hmm. one has like you know that uh, like you know dark skin a lot of people family members also they will make fun of him mm-hmm. yeah true true yeah. i've seen it's this it's very and, common yeah i've seen this up closely and uh, i cannot deny what you just said uh, forget about neighbor yeah. that happens within the family and that's the sad part right yeah that's why a lot of people they are obsessed with a lot of creams and makeup they want to change their face skins mm-hmm. to come out from this kind of things they get mm-hmm. a lot of critics uh, the people mm-hmm. stare at them if they have the black uh, like you know skin so mm-hmm. th- due to that they want to become fair and they feel like becoming fair is uh, like a very important for them they will get respect from the people mm-hmm. okay yeah i agree with you these are such uh, trivial things uh, skin color but uh, people make such a big deal out of it uh, every color mm-hmm. is beautiful uh, what matters is the kind okay. of human being that you are and i think that takes precedence over anything else your physical yeah appearance. for that you have to have a knowledge of body over the soul you don't have to think about that we are the soul we are not the body in that way if the people are educated spiritually then mm-hmm. only they will be able to understand uh just they will not make any discrimination between white and black because we are the soul body is temporary so then only we can understand otherwise i have seen the educated people also they do the same yes okay great then now um i want to talk a little about um, celebrities okay over the last few years uh, this word nepotism it's become quite the rage in media everyone is talking about it uh, would you know the meaning of nepotism Yeah, exactly it was quite popular when uh, sushant singh rajput has committed suicide that nep- mm-hmm. uh, nepotism all uh, all of the people they were talking about it it was mm-hmm. like you know in everyone's mouth so nepotism is all about when they are supporting their family members or their closed ones in the industry as you're mm-hmm. talking about the celebrities if you're the part of cinema industry so they will give chance to their kids rather than giving chance to someone who is coming out like you know who has uh, like you know who is from other family okay from the no- normal family so it's very common and what i feel i don't know like you know but if i will be there also i will give chance to my kids because what what they feel because i have worked hard for what for my family for my kids so even though they are less talented i'm going to give them chance and they get those things for granted because it's very easy for them they their father they have a good networking they will go to karan johar ekta kapoor they have a good connection they will get a movie so that is a thing but when it comes to the people who are coming from like uh, other families like if they are from farmers family like mm-hmm. sushant singh rajput he was a very he was from a very innocent family of bihar so it was really difficult for him to get a good place in the uh, cinema industry but he worked hard he was able to do it but he was not able to survive such kind of yeah. things are happening till now in every single field music industry cinema industry politics works yeah there are I several people who are brilliant uh, being as a polit- politician they can be the mm-hmm. great politician in for our country but they mm-hmm. don't get chance to be as a politician because due to the nepotism only their son and daughters they are getting chances correct true that um i think nepotism exists 
everywhere and i think in every industry whether it's sports politics mm-hmm. medicine engineering wherever um parents i feel internally they have this wish or urge i can say to make sure that their children's journeys are smooth uh but yeah but if nepotism becomes rampant uh then it's a huge problem it's a huge problem because then the talented individuals will never shine we will never know what kind of talent our country has so it should be but you know, the fortunately so- nowadays we are having social media platforms so we don't yes. need the support of a lot of uh, like you know industry if you mm-hmm. have the talent you can showcase your talent on social media platforms and you can become a celebrity without mm-hmm. going to like an you know, industry a lot of people like asis chanchalani amit badana Kerry Minati, mm. they became a star by YouTube only. Yeah, true mm-hmm. that. Nowadays, I think filmmakers want them to act in their films in order to bring their audience towards that particular film, that particular movie, right? So exactly, massive stars in their own right. They became producers now. Now they are hiring actors to work in their films or web series, just like that. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to see people with. Um, no influential background make it big in life you know it's always heartwarming to see them <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay uh, now i'll just give you a completely imaginary situation it's about trust all right mm-hmm. uh, let's say that you are uh, you have a best friend of more than 10 years and you share every minute detail and all secrets of your life with that friend and one day you realize that your friend has been revealing your secrets to somebody else um they are broadcasting it to the world behind your back so how would you feel and what would you do how would you react of course the first thing it will be heartbreaking for me i have yes. few friends like we are friends for more than 10 years mm-hmm. but uh, i don't really think so he's going to do that but it, it, you are telling this is a situation if he will be doing this kind of things uh, mm-hmm. i will of course i will feel like you know i'll get shocked and i'll be like that what what you are doing i'm just trusting on you i'm telling you everything but you are telling mm-hmm. to others that's not a good thing i will try to make him understand if he is going to understand the situation and he is going to stop doing those things in the future i will continue my uh, bonding as a friend otherwise if he will do the same i'm going to like be okay alone without my friend so that's what the thing is because after a certain age what i feel everybody has their own problems and they get busy in themselves so that's what i feel right now i'll be able to do work for myself without sharing a lot of things to the people because if he trust is the one of the most important things in a relationship in friendship in like you know everyone like for the family so if i talk about my mother and my sister they have trust on me right mm-hmm. if i will break their trust and if i will do something against of course like they will not be able to trust me again so in the same way the friends friends are really good friends and family similar like that we have been i have been in a hostel for more than i have lived there for 8 years so i have okay. a friend of mine from 2014 almost it's been 8 or 9 years so mm-hmm. if he will do the same, same like it will be difficult for me to continue the friendship so but um one thing that i noticed is you are willing to give them a second chance so it's not like you'll instantly break the friendship you will give them a second chance yes i will make him you. understand for sure okay okay all right so you're not scared of confrontation confrontation no not really it's okay because if i came to know that he is doing it but i will try to make him understand that it's not a good thing and mm-hmm. i don't want to fight i i will make him understand politely if he is able to understand otherwise i will move on because we came here alone and we will go alone nobody will go with you oh god that's so, such a deep thought <laughs> yeah okay so, so if like you... he helped you for 8 years 10 years that's good thank him that he was your friend for last 10 years and you were sharing you were enjoying a lot of things so i mm-hmm. should i must thank him for that all those years like he helped me and we were friends but if he is not able to continue that right, right now it's okay thanks for that time thanks for the good memories huh exactly okay. because nobody so, can with you nobody can be with you for whole life nobody okay. not even your parents my goodness you are dropping so many truth bombs in today's session ashutosh <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, because yeah. I'm investing a lot of things and time in spirituality. I'm trying to understand the meaning of life, and I'm trying to go with the deep thought of life because working and becoming success. That's that's I don't really think so. That's the real thing. What we are working for. Mm. Okay, so you're trying to find uh, a deeper meaning, uh, a bigger purpose to your life. For sure. Okay, good for you. Um, most people wait their entire lives to start becoming spiritual. They say that okay, let me become fifty, sixty years old, then I'll start thinking about God. Now let me serve myself, right? Uh, and I'm no different. I'm not saying I'm different, but yeah, it's good to see that. Uh, yeah, that is the thing God. which is very popular in our society that after retirement or after when we will be like we will be able to fulfill all the responsibilities as a yeah. father, as a son, as a like mm -hmm. you know husband. Then we will think about it. But what I will say that senses are already imperfect. Senses mm -hmm. are not perfect. We are in mm -hmm. new age. But when we will start like you know investing in spirituality. when we will not be able to see clearly we will not be able to hear clearly then what we will not be able to talk and speak clearly then what we will take in uh, the name of hari so it's better to take in just you know right now at the new age when you have a lot of energy so if you are mm -hmm. able to invest a little time in it that that is good so like you know offering something fresh it's really good for the god as well they don't want a flower that you have like you know you took a flower and you kept that uh, in, in just a freeze for four days and then you mm -hmm. are offering them to the god that's not a good thing when we will become old you will not be able to chant the name as well so mm -hmm. wow um that, that's really deep uh, thank you so much for sharing all of this uh, do <laughs> whatever books that you are reading uh, do you mind sharing the titles of those books with me the books uh, i have joined that is international society for krishna consciousness so they have a lot of books written by the founder of iskon sila prabhupad so i have read a book that was on the way to krishna and nowadays we are taking classes uh, actually i i take a spiritual class that is related to uh, like bhagavad gita so that is written in english as well they have bhagavad gita as it is so i read that and i try to read whenever i get time so yeah okay, okay. great good for you good for you i'm trying yeah. to explore those like you know, scriptures and religious books Hmm. Okay. All the best on this. Um, what do I call it? Endeavor. Right on your spiritual yeah, thank endeavors. Thank you. So all the best for that. And uh, you spoke really well. I think um, a a big change that I noticed in the way you speak is uh, your confidence, right? And you also you are not shying away from making really bold opinions about the society, about how things are. So uh, you spoke your heart out. and i really appreciate that and the way you were speaking was so impactful like the intonation uh, where you wanted to make a very strong point your volume automatically rose and the rest of the time it was pretty normal so you were speaking like a motivational speaker you know a very impactful way of talking uh, so great really nice i'm thank you impressed. thank you so much yeah. and when you speak with this level of confidence and fluency and also logic uh people don't usually pay attention to vocabulary or grammar because they are eager to listen to what you have to say they are eager to listen mm -hmm. to your ideas so yeah keep up the good work i really don't have anything to fault in today's session so you were really amazing ashutosh really nice oh thank you so much manvi thanks to you for your a lot of compliments <laughs> and yeah what i feel I, i i can work on vocabulary and way of like you know different way of speaking but i would like to go very deep into thoughts and i would like to explore things very well important. so i can come up with a good idea because knowledge goes parallel with your communication skills if you have a lot of things good but if you don't have good thought process then how you are going to speak and what you are going to speak completely agree that's why i always tell my learners focus on what you have to say not the other mm -hmm. decorations right um, vocabulary is just a tool for you to speak your mind vocabulary is not everything in english uh, mm -hmm. and to be very honest the choice of words you use depends on your audience if you go and start talking to a beginner in english with very advanced words they will not want to speak with you they'll feel very discouraged you'll make them feel bad so we have yeah, exactly they will think that you are trying to show off or showcase yeah. your english Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. I always believe have simplicity in your words, 
and show greatness in your thoughts right so this has to be maintained use simple vocabulary it's totally fine but what you say and how you say it that matters more correct so i think you did yeah exactly, exactly. your message should be clear if you are trying to say and use a lot of complex and fancy words but your audience is not able to understand you then it is not going to make any sense i think so and an overdose of anything is not good in every sentence if you are introducing some word which is like very advanced um it's yeah. it's not helpful it feels i have good. some like an experience when i used to interact with the people and i used to do conversation with people few people i got oh my goodness they used to use four to five new words in every single sentence and they used to speak, like they used to speak like a rocket so it was very difficult for me to understand and after talking to them for 5 minutes i used to say thank you so much ma'am it was really nice talking to you <laughs> i don't <laughs> because it was difficult to understand mm -hmm. yes yes i feel like if you are preparing for any competitive exam like the ielts or pt and stuff like that yes it matters because there you are getting graded for your vocabulary mm -hmm. but for spoken english you should know basic words to describe your thoughts and emotions um uh, but focus more on the quality of your ideas and the way you're presenting it to people try to make it impactful right and you did that and um yeah that's it you amazing job hats off to you and i hope i'll see you in the next session okay yeah sure why not thank, thank you so you. much kenny thanks to you i forgot to ask uh -huh. do you have any questions do you have any questions for me yeah questions i will ask you one question related to the fillers sometimes what mm -hmm. i felt when i speak in a flow i use some fillers like even though i have observed many people they do it like you know is a very common thing and like also which we use so like how we can work on it consciously uh regulate the speed with which you are talking fillers start cropping up in your sentences when you lose control over what you are saying it means you are just speaking on and on and on so when you realize that you are using a lot of fillers just pause for 2 seconds don't speak anything give yourself time to breathe gather your thoughts and start afresh speak at a normal pace think before you speak right speak mm -hmm. at a normal pace think before you speak don't shy away from taking pauses so these are the three tips that will 100% help you overcome fillers Yeah, exactly. I will try my best because it happens most of the time. I'm able to convey whatever I want to, but at the end of the day, I'm I'm able to observe that I took many fillers, as you know. Because when it becomes little difficult and you are like you know thinking and framing those sentences, that what like important thing you are going to speak. As you said, think before you speak. It is very important because a lot of leaders they take time while they are speaking. They don't speak like a super Random. fast train because the, yeah their statement is going to be judged people they will listen it again and again so they will have to think before speaking correct true that great observation ashutosh and on that note let's wrap up the session i will see you in the next class take care bye okay sure thank you so much bye bye